Hey, Tommy, we've got some breaking news that I think our EV fans are going to be excited about. I'm certainly excited about. Tell me about the Polestar 6. Yeah, so this is a new model which was revealed back in March, but now we have some numbers and some news behind it. And when it's coming, this thing is really happening and it looks fantastic. So this is a convertible, of course, uh, and I've long been saying that they're building too many electric crossovers and they're regretfully forgetting about all the other kinds of cars, uh, like a convertible. So I think this is like the fourth electric electric convertible that's been put into production, if I'm not wrong, right? Tesla was first with the Roadster. Yeah, so there was the Roadster, there was the Smart convertible, which was a little toaster car. There was the um, Rimac, or the Rimats, right, which is the, the hypercar. And now this will be number four, the Polestar. Yeah, the Polestar 6, uh, and I gotta tell you, I kinda like the look of it. It's got um, a lot of interesting lines. Some might say too many interesting intersecting lines, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, this is actually a concept that was introduced back in March. Um, and in this video, we're going to tell you all about it. And we're going to tell you, in fact, everything that we know about it. So let's start with uh, what we know so far. Well, it's built on a bonded aluminum platform that also underpins the four-door Polestar 5. So it's got some platform sharing going on. Obviously, this is not a four-door model. It obviously doesn't have a roof on it either. So this is a good really interesting new approach at an electric convertible, which as you mentioned, we haven't seen in a long time. And it's gonna be called, as we talked about at the beginning, the Polestar 6. So what's powering this bad boy? Well, it packs a two motor, fully electric setup. So it runs on an 800 volt architecture with a combined 884 horsepower and 664 foot pounds of torque per Polestar's official release. And what does that mean from zero to 60? Uh, according to Polestar, 3.2 seconds with a top speed of 155 miles per hour. Dude, I want one of these. <laughs> the funny thing is, do you remember a little while ago there was like this big stink because Polestar's sister brand Volvo has been pushing toward lower top speeds? Like, I think they were 112 limited a lot of Volvo yeah, cars. Yeah, the, the CEO of Volvo not that long ago said that there will be no fast Volvos. <laughs> Yeah, but now, of course, Polestar, a sister brand, is coming up with this convertible, which will do 155. Now, 3.2 seconds is pretty incredible. They're not going for uh, any land speed records here, any acceleration records. Obviously, like a Tesla Model uh, S Plaid is going to be quicker from 0 to 60, um, and there's other vehicles which are quicker. 3.2 is still insanely fast for what it is and uh, should mean that this is a very, very competitive vehicle. So let's finish about the specs that we know. Uh, like the O2 concept on which it's based, it will have a retractable hardtop, which is unusual because hardtops went out of style about 10 years ago. Hardtop convertibles, that is. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, if you go back like to the um, early, mid 2000s, everything was hardtop convertibles. Even Volvo was jumping in the back. Bandwagon was the, like the C70. And the SL, of course. The, yeah, SL was yeah, hardtop Mercedes, convertibles. Yeah. BMW was going crazy with the hardtop convertibles. And then like a few years ago, the, the, the trend stopped quickly and abruptly. Well, because they were heavy. Yeah, and now everyone's gone back to soft top convertibles. So it's interesting to me that Polestar is sticking with the hardtop on this. Whether or not that makes it into full production will have to be seen. Uh, so a low and wide body, a plenty of angles, minimalist interior, which is the Polestar way, uh, with a large center infotainment screen. Now, let's talk about Polestar for a second before we keep going. Polestar uh, was or is a company that used to be kind of the AMG of Mercedes or the M of BMW and instead of kind of folding it into the BMW, uh, into the Volvo brand, they broke it out and made it its own company. Uh, so they came out with this beautiful hybrid car. Then of course we have the car that's on sale right now, which is a you know a, an EV. But uh, the thing about a cynical view about Polestar is that the reason they broke it away from Volvo was so that they could get a whole set of uh, EV tax credits as opposed to being rolled into the Volvo tax credits. And that's a lot of incentives because, as you know, uh, up until you know they signed uh, the most recent uh, uh, environmental package, it was seven and a half thousand dollars. So, um, other things about Polestar is that they typically have their own dealer network as well. So it's a separate company from Volvo. You buy them and service them separately. Although sometimes they are related to Volvo networks. Yeah, it's not as so much as the dealer network as it is uh, an, a virtual kind of. They sell cars the way that uh, uh, Tesla sells cars. So, sort of though. And then if you want to get them serviced, you take them to Volvo dealerships. But I don't know if it's quite the same because they have like little pop-up stores. Yes. Polestar. But you can't order the cars through the store. I think you have to do it online. Yeah, you do it it's online. It's like a very interesting hybrid dealer Ex direct sale model. Exactly right. And, you know, they're cranking it out. I was reading... Uh 
uh, sales numbers, and I think they sold, I don't want to misquote this, but it was a lot for an electric car. All right, so when is this thing coming, Tommy? So Polestar's current lineup includes a Polestar 2, which is the uh, basically sedan, although it's a little bit lifted, and then the Polestar 3 SUV coming in 2023, and the Polestar 5 sedan coming in 2024. Now, the Roadster will launch after those models in 2026, so we're still a few years out. Yeah, so the company did say it would launch with uh, 500 Polestar 6 LA Concept Editions, Tommy, uh, celebrating the initial run. Um, and they're building at least that many, so you can expect the Roadster to be a fairly limited model. Uh, the limited edition includes 21-inch wheels, a sky blue exterior, and then light leather interior. By the way, the interior in this is very cool, very minimalist. I love the uh, the yellow or uh, yellow gold seat belt. I think they look great. I love the center-mounted infotainment, and the steering wheel's got a pretty funky design as well. So they did a good job on the interior. Now, what do you think? Is this going to be uh, a return to EV convertibles? Well, you know, uh, in our notes here, it says providing Tesla puts their roadster into production before 2026 to Polestar 6. We'll go head head with that. Of I'm course. not so sure. I'm not so sure. You don't think it's going to, you, you don't think Tesla's going to actually build the, the Roadster? Well, that's another question for another day. I think the Roadster's going to be a much more expensive vehicle. Um, I think it's going to be more hypercar territory. I'm thinking that this is going to be more aimed at like the Porsche Boxster, um, maybe some of the Lotus products, but this does not seem like something that's going to be a $250,000, $300,000 car, which is what the Roadster could end up being. I could see this being a car like in the eighty dollars to $100,000 range, which would, like I said, put it up against models like the Porsche Boxster. So do you think they'll shoot it in space? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> like how Tesla did it with theirs? No, uh, what do you think it's going to cost? What's your What's your guess? Um, so the Pulse, the first Polestar, right, was very expensive. That was a quarter million dollars. Mm -hmm, that was and, very expensive, and yeah. The hybrid, and maybe this is uh, going back to that pricing strategy. So I think it will compete uh, with the Tesla Roadster if and when that's ever built. So it could be as high as $250,000. Uh, you know, uh, Polestar is trying to set itself apart as the premium brand, premium Swedish brand. Of course, as you know, it's owned uh, as, as is Volvo by Geely, which is a Chinese company. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're given uh, Volvo and Polestar a lot of room uh, to create kind of their new way uh, in electrification, and I think that they're doing a hell of a good job. I mean, I love the look of that car, and I'm super excited that there's going to be a competition now. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like with the, the trucks, right? For a long time, there were th no electric trucks, and then Rivian came out with an electric truck, and the next thing you know, there were, you know, a half a dozen companies building electric trucks. So I think this will spur a lot more companies into uh, electrifying convertibles. We'll see. I mean, um, we've also got some big names that we don't know if they're going to go electric in anytime soon, but like the Corvette, right? Um, there's been rumors of electrified versions of the Corvette coming, which could go head to head with this, because I do see a certain number of kind of C8 Corvette design influences with this, now that the c 8 electric, kind of its profile and its really pointy nose, a little bit of kind of a similar Stingray-like design in that aspect. But it is going to be very interesting to see, especially the pricing and the availability. If this is going to be like a limited thing where uh, we're only going to see a few hundred of them, 500, 700, whatever it may be, I'm not sure it's going to make the ways that it, it, it probably should, but if this is a vehicle, like I said, in that eighty dollars to $100,000 range where they're targeting Corvette and Porsche, I think that this could be a really cool uh, little little roadster. So I've got two thoughts here. When I was reading this press release, I thought to myself, it's about time somebody actually built a electric uh, convertible. Uh, but the next thing that's missing that I want to see is actually electric off-roader. Right? The closest we get is like the Wrangler 4xe, which is you mm -hmm. know a plug-in hybrid, but I'd love to see a dedicated electric electric off-roader. Uh, and, uh, Tommy, I would still love to see an affordable electric car. I mean, Leaf tried it, uh, Chevy tried it with the Bolt, none of them were very successful in general. I would love to see, you know, something with that much styling and that much detail that's not going to be $100,000 or $150,000. Wouldn't that be something if you could actually build the Model T of electric cars? Well, Volkswagen's trying with the ID4. There was recently announced a new model, right, that, that after tax credit's going to be high $20,000 range, low 30, which is interesting. So that is an appealing option, but in terms of fun to drive sports cars, I agree completely. It'd be really amazing to see something like this in the forty to fifty thousand dollar price range instead of the two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollar price range. We still have a lot of questions we don't know about this. Final details on uh, when they're going to roll out not quite uh, yet established. So we'll have to stay tuned. And guys, if you want to 
stay up to date on all the things that are happening in the auto world, just go to alttfl.com where Andre's busy posting truck news, uh, Tommy's busy doing really cool classic videos. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot out there right now. Uh, so check out alltfl.com and thank you for watching and uh, hopefully see you at the Overland Expo. Ciao. Howdy folks, I am here with this star of Northern Lightning, our Ford F-150 Lightning, and I have other stars, and all of which you're gonna be able to meet at the Overland Expo, including me, yeah, that's right. We're gonna be hanging out between two and three on Friday at the Overland Expo to meet and greet you guys, but there's somebody else who's gonna be there as well. That's right. Um, it's gonna be in Loveland, Colorado, 26th and 27th of August, 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Come by and see us. Where are we at, Andre? We're at the four-wheel camper booth. And guess what, guys? We've got some stickers to give away. Nice.